This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. <laughs> Everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Nightwing News. I am Phil, and of course, joining me as always every week is Hi, I'm Kristen. And hey, we just what was that? Three weeks ago, we had a guest, uh, Devin Grayson. Well, tonight, oh, oh, yes, now we have an extra special guest because yes, last week Kristen mentioned an article she read, uh, written by uh, Mr. Joshua Lappin Bertoni. So, guess who I contacted that same <laughs> night. Yeah, the, 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 this guy's really fast. He slipped way right into those Twitter DMs. Probably like as you were recording. So. No, it was like five minutes after we were done. <laughs> it was really quick, though. I was yeah. like, for real? I think that's the quickest turnaround I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to 2020 where everyone's connected to their phone. So, like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. I like immediately see them. Like, yeah, no, no agents, no, nothing like that. Let's just. But no, Devin Grayson, that's interesting because, yeah, me and um one of my colleagues, Donovan Morgan, we did a lengthy interview with her a few years ago that was, like, really, really good and, like, really, really brutally – she was really, really brutally honest on what she thought about what she did at the time and what she wished could have been better from DC side and what she wished she would have done better. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, I have, like, so much respect for – I feel really bad because when I was reading those books, like – back in like 2004 i was like not about them but i'm now i'm like oh my gosh she's such an awesome human i feel bad that i ever like you know like didn't like some of those issues now i want to read them again (laughs) yeah we both talked to her separately this was like the first time we talked to her together but uh yeah because uh so explain to me it's i i see on your twitter bio it says you're a freelance contributor for dc comics so I, I we we did see your article. So is that what you do? You to, like do the articles? Or? Yeah. What's your re- what's your real job? <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. That was that was my favorite part. I was like, <laughs> I feel really really like attacked. You no, know, not really. No, sorry. She I didn't she mean it like you know that. she's she I know, I know. I she's a like, fancy college professor. So I yeah. was like, but no matter what I've done, there has always been someone that have said, so when are you gonna get a real job? And it's like, <laughs> so more um, I meant. I couldn't imagine that DC Universe would pay you enough that that could be your full time job and you wouldn't be living in a van down by the river. That was more where that down was. Down by the from. river. Um, so, yeah, I use the word freelance contributor because basically I'm an independent contractor. Like, I'm not a Warner Brothers or DC Comics employee, but DC does uh, take care of me. And in return, I take care of them. It's um, a very awesome relationship, and it makes me uh, it makes it makes my inner eleven year old like very very happy. Like uh, someone did this thing on Twitter recently where it was like, if twelve year old you ever met you, what would they think? And they'd be like, oh my gosh, your name is on DC Comics. That's so awesome. Because uh, I I was like the big DC fanboy as a kid, but so I write for DC Universe's news section and DCComics.com news section, and. Um, it's great it's not the only thing i do um i have like three or four like other jobs but that's just because i am a renaissance man living in this you know uh you know millennial world where everyone has to like do multiple things to stay afloat but i will say that um dc does take care of me and i can't go you know too much into that or the snipers will get me but uh 
Well, I'm glad to hear it is a real job. Because yes, I apologize. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be insulting. I, I was thought, like, I thought it was, I, I was okay. I thought it was hilarious. Like, because I I also work with kids, and like I've done that for years. And like one of the kids, like we were like I was taking them to like the YMCA to go swimming one day, and one of them looked at me and said, "When are you gonna get a real job?" And I'm like, "Oh, so like taking care of you is not a real job." Like, good to know. And now like I'm doing this like DC stuff, and then I got. Uh, <laughs> Kristen over here, like, so what's your real job? <laughs> when do I get a real job? When does that happen? <laughs> Wait, if it pays the bills, then it's a real job. It keeps these uh, lights on. Um, it doesn't keep the Google Chrome on, which is why I'm recording this from the iPhone, though, unfortunately. Uh, so, do you still do your Batman universe? Because as soon as you, I didn't remember your name, but as soon as your face popped up, I was like, I met this guy before. You were at that conference in Bowling Green. Oh, you were at the Bowling Green. We were, we were both there. That's the, that's like the one time me and her met in person. Yeah, we were both there last year. Because I live, I only live half an hour from Bowling Green. I had to drive a couple hours, but wasn't that so much fun? was it was good you guys should have led with that you should have been like oh did you guys speak at the thing or were you uh guest yeah we spoke yeah, yeah i did well i did something about um we did batman family stuff because of course i was afraid that they build it as a batman conference and that everyone was going to be like grim dark batman and then it turns out no grim dark batman people showed up so i was you know ecstatic oh yeah she loves dick dick grayson's like her favorite character and she's all about the you know the interaction between you know dick grayson and the rest of the bat family yeah i I read i read punchy i read punchy comics and like skip through the punchy parts so that i so that i can get to the heartwarming things oh i'm the same way like i won't remember like some of the battles but i'll remember like the interactions and the relationships and the conversations like that's what i like focus on as well but yeah that bowling green thing i like i was like i don't know i'll do something about you know the gotham tv show because i thought that people would be doing very very like broad stuff but then when i got there everyone was doing like really really specific stuff and i was like shoot i would have like picked something more focused Mm -hmm. and uh, Um, right, I know I could have just written something just about Dick Grayson, but I thought it needed to be like Batman broader, bro, more broadly speaking. Yeah, yeah we were the la- we were the last panel, so everyone was pretty tapped out by that point. I mean, honestly, I was kind of tapped out by that point. You do you do seem familiar, but yeah, I remember um, like that that weekend was so much. Was it a weekend or a week? I don't know. It felt like a weekend, but like I think was it was so- a Friday, Saturday. So, so like, yeah, there was that whole panel and like, Josh, I'm kind of familiar with you because I've listened to you on a few old podcasts. I've listened to every episode of Clone Saga Chronicles and I'm trying to work my way through uh, every episode of the Spider-Man Crawl Space. I'm just, I think I just got to 2014. I think you just left the show. Oh yes. <laughs> so 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 just to show you that I, that I'm I'm being uh, truthful, uh, Betty Brandt. That's all I'll say. You know, it's it's oh man, that Betty Brandt stuff was very problematic in this too. So, Sp- like, Sp- <laughs> I know, I know. It was I, so mean that- to this fictitious woman who was like ridden by chauvinistic men. It wasn't her fault that she was ridden by chauvinistic men. Like shame on you, past for Tony, for your being to Betty. Brandt. But it's just so fu- it's just so funny listening to shows that old because it's like you know like a time capsule. It's like oh, what do you think's gonna happen in Avengers: Age of Ultron? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, or like, oh wow, these Andrew Garfield movies, this is a new thing, and <laughs> like, the, the next actor, or, uh, <laughs> remember when we were allowed to hug each other? Yes. Like that, and, remember when we could go to restaurants? I'm like, I'm like, New Mutants is still coming out this weekend? What? I know. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna listen to this in like six years, and it's like on our way to see New Mutants finally. And it's uh, supposedly this Friday. You know, we'll see if uh, something happens. But it's funny because when I put the clip up of you saying that you listen to me on Spider Man podcast, uh, John Wilson said to me, he's like, "Ah, oh, you listen to classics," and I said, "You don't know which two Spider Man." Nope. <laughs> because <laughs> I was on a lot. Because so. you said Donovan, I'm like, "Hey, I know Donovan from the show." Yeah. <laughs> I got off the phone with Donovan, like, right before I, like, set the computer up. I said, well, I'm going to set my computer up and, like, make, you know, shave a little bit for, for this thing. So uh, he says, yeah, he was at Bowling Green, too. That was – I'm so glad that they did that last year because if they would have done it this year and it would have been canceled for the oh, pandemic, yeah. it would have broken my heart because I was looking forward to that so much. 
and I just wish it had been longer that we have would have more time to like kind of take it in and explore the college and stuff like that. Um, Stella from uh, Backworld Oracle podcast, mm-hmm. uh, she went with us and did a presentation, and I had a uh, uh, Ben who's uh, my little convention court assistant correspondent intern. He was with us for the first day, and uh, Carolyn Coca, who's um, really good. Uh, person to have on like stuff like this uh she was there as well and uh it's just a uh, people from batman on film that we knew and uh other batman universe people so see Kristen, Which- he has a real job he has an intern come on <laughs> yeah <laughs> i stand i stand corrected he can I pay his bills him. it's real I will it's tell real. my intern that you said that, that like he is, he is my validation for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the fact that my job is real. Uh, um, and, and so do you guys I, still do Batman Universe or did you like get sucked up into – Oh, now she's like, it's a real job, but do you still do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Batman, that's separate from DC. Yeah, yeah. Funny, this whole like Bowling Green, Spider-Man Crawl Space, Betty Brand, that all started with the whole – do you still do Batman Universe question that we've gone full circle? Um, not all the time, but like I'm still in their staff group and I still occasionally I'll give them like, you know, an editorial or something. Um, I've been busy, but uh, Dustin is somebody who I would not be where I was. Dustin for children's the Batman uh, Universe editor. He's someone who I would not be in the position I'd be in today if it wasn't for the platform that he mm-hmm. gave me and the way that he helped me grow as a podcaster and as a comic book journalist, you know, and stuff like that. So, um, uh, other sites that I've left behind or that I'm not doing anymore, like, because I'm busy, Dustin's not one of them. I mean, he'll say, well, what do you mean? I'm not one of them. When's the last time you given me something, but you know, like I, I'm, I don't feel like leaving Batman universe behind completely just because like, Oh, you know, I'll like, if there's a re- if there's an issue that needs to be reviewed that no one's reviewed, like sometimes I'll do the young adult graphic novels when no one does them because I like to give TVU something you know when I can here and there, uh, and it's just a while between the times that I do them because of uh, time. So usually it's like instead of like a monthly review or like a weekly podcast, we still have to do a final episode of the Gotham Chronicle podcast because that like. Uh, we were doing that, like, by the time that the last season had started, I was already doing my DC Universe stuff and my other stuff, so, like, I barely had time to cover Gotham's last season. Oh. So, it, like, that kind of trick, that show kind of ended at the appropriate time. That's basically but, what got me into podcasting was, well, one, Gotham, and then uh, the other, uh, Flat, Flash was the other show that, like, got me into podcasting, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I was saying to Don and a few other people, like, if Gotham hadn't been canceled like then, it would be in trouble now because that show was like, n- not to get too controversial, like, there was a lot of police brutality on that show. Where, like, Gordon will, like, torture people on the table and, like, someone will be like, can he do that? And he'll be like, this is my play. Oh, yeah, between the police brutality and just, like, Alfred's, like, slapping Selena and stuff. It, that's, a, that's a joke. We st- <laughs> me, Chris, and me and Lil still talk about that. It's like, he's, like, slapping kids and stuff. And <laughs> I, I never watched it. <laughs> I loved that show, but it got, like, bananas. Oh, yeah, because it was it was supposed to be just be, like, Jim Gordon police procedural, but they're like, oh, no, we need a kid Bruce Wayne. We need to bring in all the rogues now. <laughs> it's a Batman prequel that, like, couldn't help itself but to, like, do everything that, like, a prequel was, like, not supposed to get to. Oh, yeah, it was supposed to be Jim Gordon. Then, like, what, already by the first season, Penguin was, like, stealing the show. Robin Lord Taylor is, like, so awesome. Oh, yeah. I hope he's on, and he's like one of those celebrities that whenever I meet him, he always hugs me, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And now I'm, and if I saw him now, he wouldn't be able to hug me because of the pandemic, I'm realizing. But like, when you're at these conventions, you have those celebrities who are kind of like, you know, standoffish or whatever. They're tired because they talk to like, you oh, yeah. know, 50 of you, 100 of you a day, and they're, they're in and out of junkets. They're doing different things, but like, Robin Lord Taylor, he always had the energy and he always knew how to like make people feel special, which hmm. I love. But uh oh no, the, I know I wanted to ask you like uh we were talking about your uh Jason Todd uh, article last <laughs> week. <laughs> uh do do you go to do you come to them with that? You're like, "Hey, I got a Jason Todd article." Or, or do they come to you and be like, "Hey, we got, you know, cuz that what is that? The Death and the Death and the Family animated is coming out soon." So they're like, "Do they come to you and say, "Hey, we need a Jason Todd article?" Or So so it's both. Um 
we send, and, and I say we, um, because there's a few people on the freelance team. There's, you know, Kat, uh, I hope I'm saying her last name correctly, like Kalamara. Uh, I talk to her almost every day. I should ask her, am I pronouncing your last name correctly? Um, Alex Jaff, Donovan Morton Grant, Kyle Dotson, and, uh, you know, people that kind of rotate in and out. And we'll email the editors, hey, we have an idea for this article based on this thing or this thing. And sometimes the other will say, yeah, I like that, but maybe if you do this angle or that one. And occasionally the editors will email us based on what our strengths are and say, oh, I have this idea for an article. And I remember this. Um, I'm in a different time zone than Mike because I'm, I'm over in Tampa, Florida. My editor's in Burbank, California. So I don't know what time it was for him, but it was like late at night. I'm having a burger at like this uh, place because it's Florida and Florida people are stupid about restaurants. So I went to... I went to. I wore a mask and I socially distanced, but I went to get a burger and like it's like you're a Florida man. Uh oh. I know. Um. So they pretend that there's no pandemic here and it's really weird. But I mean, I guess I went to get that burger, so I can't say much. Um. I wore a mask. I socially distanced. But anyway, nice. my editor emailed me, and he, the subject line is article idea, and then like, and then I opened the email and it's like. 10 times because originally it was 10 times but then we like he got it down to five he's like actually it'll be funnier if it's five because then it's like you know folly over quantity he said five times we wanted to we wanted to uh kill jason todd before the joker crowbarred him <laughs> and i was like oh I so he told that. you to write that he asked me and i say yes because i like saying yes and um <laughs> he gives me a lot of freedom he didn't say use this one use this one use this one and I didn't want to do what I call low hanging fruit because it would have been easy to be like, oh, when he disobeyed Batman and like you know and pushed the the rapist and um, off the balcony, off the, yeah, yeah, or in Death in the Family when he like got the you know that, that that's too easy. That's like you know I'm just gonna have fun with this. Like let me like, and I uh, <laughs> I knew that I had to mention the cousin Oliver haircut. <laughs> like stuff like that and then i, well, I mean as soon as you said the line dick grayson is a national treasure i was like phil this guy's this guy i know she said me the link she's like you have to read this before we record <laughs> because he is a national treasure yeah. and that's but nice. i do think that was a good i do think that was a good way to approach that article was you could definitely tell that you were being funny that it wasn't because yeah. like that's not really a very nice topic <laughs> like, yeah, all these times we should have killed this kid. Yeah. One of the writers, when I, told him what I was doing, he said, all the times that we wanted to brutalize a child. And I'm like, I mean, I guess. Exactly. That's why you have, that's why you had to write it as a joke because. Yeah. It's uh, uh and then I realized as I was writing it, like, oh, two of these are like times after he died. So like I changed the title and put parentheses and after like <laughs> Joker crowbar him. But yeah, with with a title like that, because I was I was also taking the lead, uh, my lead from the other who put like in there um, all the time, you know, after, before the Joker crowbarred him. With a title like that, you can't help but like have fun with it or not take it seriously. Right, exactly. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. So th that that was a fun one to do, and as a result, it's like I had to find these examples that were kind of like more lighthearted. And I was looking back and. Um, I think that Titans one, the one where I said, like, he's a national, or did I say the national treasure for the uh, Titans one or the Cousin Oliver? I, for one yeah, of with the most... Cousin, the very first, well, the very first one. Yeah. <laughs> with oh, his, yeah, oh with he, when he ripped off the origin story and had a Cousin Oliver haircut. I was very proud of the line in 1983, Batman had adopted two orphans. One was a circus acrobat whose parents were killed by criminals. The other was Dick Grayson. I was like, that, that was, I mean, I'm, I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one again. If I yeah, can. no, that was a good one. That first, that first entry was two thumbs up. Epic. Good stuff. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to tell my other that you guys like that one and that, uh, Dick Grayson's a popular subject on the new section page. Um, his articles get a lot of hits. Um, Alex Jaff, um, one of the other writers on there, he did an article about a year ago called, like, when did Dick Grayson get so sexy? And I don't know if that's the case now, but at one point, it was, like, the most popular article on the site that had, like, the most clicks and, like, the, the most shares. And when we went to C2, was yeah, I think it was C2E2, uh, Sam Humphreys, like, introduced, like, you know, at a panel, he was talking about different features on DC Universe, and he's like, and the new section... 
And my favorite article is when did Nightwing get so sexy? And I was, I think I was sitting next to Alex when they said that. I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the character's so popular. I don't know why. I mean, we finally get him live action in Titans, but I don't know why they aren't just like throwing him in everything now and just like merchandising the hell out of Night what, Nightwing more. I got my uh, disco wing shirt. Yes. <laughs> I had to. I had to make sure that I wore that for today, and it was. Uh, I felt like Prozone from. Um, Incredibles because I was like looking all around my house for it like where's my Nightwing shirt where's my Nightwing shirt you know to my non-existent wife (laughs) I'm like (laughs) she's like I don't know I don't exist you're a bachelor I don't know where you keep your shirts like (laughs) um one of another Nightwing article that did really well I did this one last year was like I did every single girl that Dick Grayson ever dated um I'm very proud of that one because it was like very thorough like the, ve- the very first girl that he fell in love with was like some like Atlantean like princess from like a golden age story. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. He looked exactly like her brother, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Did, what the heck? Yeah, I'd have to go back. I mean, sorry, I was in here, but I do remember though when I was reading that one about Decreasing getting so sexy. I've talked about this before. Well, when we were doing the book for the with somebody else. Uh, and I, I see now I'd have to go back because it's been, but I feel like, I don't know, I had some quibbles with it. That's all I remember. I was like, oh, I feel like you can actually date it a little what? bit. What? When you were putting together your book? Yes, that oh, book. Did you do that book? I that, did that book. That's I her. I hope you like it. <laughs> I did, my friend Donovan has that book. That, he's, um, that's her. And he's, um, he cited in it, and actually, it's like it's an interview that we did together. But like, he, oh. was, the, he was the only one that was credited in it. So like, we kind of like joked that like he got to be cited in the book because my name was left off of the original article. But... Oh man, so you are the Bill Finger to his Bob King? Oh, no, Don- Donovan would never do me like that. Okay, <laughs> Don- Donovan makes sure that I get credit. In fact, Donovan. Um, put credit for me in the original version of the like draft that he sent but it got like taken out so. bummer i'm sorry i had no idea i know well no, really it's, it's i fine. was like it's, it's cool because donovan's name is in that book and an article that we worked on together is in that book and i i think that that's like so cool really it's evident that i'm kind of an amateur on uh internet stuff because I didn't actually know about your guys' website. I, like, went to more, to, like, try to find some people through academic uh, kind of kind of stuff. And I should have reached out to more fan-type people. You college professors. <laughs> the Carolyn, those Carolyn Cocas of the world. <laughs> yeah, if you ever get a chance to listen to Backworld Oracle, listen to those Carolyn Coke episodes. And they talk about, like, you know, birds of prey and, like, a very... Um, a very good way that uh you know makes you rethink a lot of things that people take for granted because they just see it all the time i listened like, like the, the first thing. episode or two my problem is i try to listen to like 50 million podcasts <laughs> <laughs> you're one of those guys yeah yeah like all about comics i listen to zero podcasts i don't even listen to this one that i'm on <laughs> hey hey i listen to a million that's how i le- that's how i heard spider jeopardy okay Oh yes, yeah, Spider Jeopardy. Yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of fun. I thought Michael Bailey was going to kill you that one time. Yeah, we uh, we're friends now, <laughs> but uh, I don't think I made the greatest first impression on him. Um, I can be a little insufferable. I'll be the first to admit. That. I mean, it was entertaining, but I was like, ooh, that'd be awkward. Yeah, it, it, it was entertaining, but yeah, no, him and I are uh, him and I. In fact, we finally met in person a few years ago at Dragon Con. I like showed up to one of his panels and I like wore a mask. And he was like looking at me, like, and he's like, "Is that Josh?" <laughs> Wait, what happened? Oh, so I didn't tell Michael Bailey, who like I've known for years, and, and at this point, like, we were friends. Like, you know, he, we were internet friends during that crawl space thing. But internet friends, where he was like, "I can't stand this guy," but like he's in all the social, like, meeting <laughs> Bailey couldn't stand me. Like, ah. I really can't stand this guy, but we're in the same social group, so I'm gonna tolerate him, and then. You know, I kind of wore my way into his heart, and um, I there was a few years I was going to go to Dragon Con, and uh, he, uh, I didn't tell him, and I always like, couldn't go at the last minute. So this time, instead of telling him I was going to go, I didn't, and I didn't say anything on Facebook to like anyone in public, and I like just showed up to one of his panels, 
and I like wore a Bane mask that like he knew I wore because of my social media sometimes and like a Spider-Man hat and like a Beatles shirt and he was like looking at me like from the thing and then like he posted something on Facebook like I'm hosting my panel and I like commented on oh I wish I could be there and it was like and he, he realized like by the end of the panel that it was me and he's like I'm just gonna wait for him to make the first move and uh wait which uh, one's where's the Dragon Con one I know that name Atlanta Atlanta, okay. Which uh, we would be getting ready for uh, right now if it uh, wasn't COVID, because that's uh, end of August. Last year I went with um, John Wilson, Donovan Grant, and um, Michael Bailey, and uh, we hosted a panel on identity crisis that was, uh, I was going to say a lot of fun, but it was like actually a very, very serious panel. So like, it's hard to describe like, you know, hooray, we're killing Sue Dibney, you know, as like, and making Gene Lauren insane, like, it's not really a fun topic. It's a like, yeah, DC got really, really dark there for like a period, and like Nightwing barely survived that period, as some of us know. Oh, Infinite! What Infinite Crisis? Well, Infinite Crisis came after Identity, but it was like around yeah. oh yeah, like yeah, yeah. kind of era where like poor Dick couldn't catch a break because that was like uh, there was that storyline where. Um, um, his apartment building's like blown up. Haley Circus blows up. Um, him and Barbara break up. He gets into that weird relationship. Tarantula. With Tarantula. Yeah. Uh, he joins the mafia. Yeah, that was the Devin Grayson era. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, Rave. Then he's working with Deathstroke. Yeah, it was a dark time. Yeah, yeah. His the name was like Renegade or something. Um, it was um, it was an interesting time. And then they were gonna kill him and. Uh, uh, he got saved at the last minute by editor by someone convinced somebody not to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, oh, I heard stories. I don't know if they're true. Like people were like, you know, if, if uh, was it the Dido? Yeah. When he, he'd like go to the airport and the guy like handling his bags would be like, okay, I'll give you your luggage, but you gotta promise not to kill Nightwing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's- well, according to the I don't know, the like info at the back of one of the trade paperbacks of uh, Infinite Crisis, Jeff Johns was like, we can't kill Nightwing. It's yeah like everyone like fought against it and the funny thing was like that interview that's uh it's that that cited in the in your book uh that donovan i did with devin grayson like she says um i knew how he felt about night uh, that he wanted to kill nightwing because dan didio made that known she she says something like he made his opinion on that known countless times and i'm thinking like how does it come up organically like a pet like would she just be like pitching stories and dan DeVio be like i want to kill nightwing by the way like how do you, how do like, you, so I'm thinking of doing this with the character I'm writing. Oh, by the way, I want to kill that guy. Well, I thought, uh, I, I, thought yeah, I, I, I thought I heard, didn't, th- I thought it was just he had a problem with some of those legacy characters like Dick Grayson and Wally West. Like, he was just like, well, why do we need them? Were, he thought they were useless. Cause yeah, because he's like, oh, why do we need Dick not, Grayson? We have Tim yeah. Drake and, you know. I, 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 can't, I can't speak for him. Funny enough, like, I'm, I'm looking at my little webcam thing and over my shoulder, there's a picture of me, Donovan, and Ben. By the DC Bullets, and Dan DiDio actually took that picture. <laughs> like, oh, wow. We had won the DC press breakfast, and I was like, "Oh, let's get a picture in front of the Bullets." And we were like looking for like someone to like take the picture. So I, I see Dan DiDio. I'm like, "Oh, Dan DiDio, can you take the picture?" And and he's just like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." Like you know, and like afterwards, Don's like, "You got? Why did you ask Dan DiDio to do that?" I was like, "He was nearby. He could hold a camera." It's like that old joke. It's like, "Hey, Dan, can we get a picture?" Oh yeah, sure. Here you hand him the camera. Here. Huh? Take the picture. Oh, <laughs> maybe he wanted to be in, and I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I um, every time that picture comes up, Don will like bring up to me. He's like, "You had Dan DiDio take that." I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> I did. Are you gonna? You need to write that on the bag for whoever you know. Yeah. Oh, hey. Before, that picture. Oh, hey. Before we get to the issue we were going to talk about, uh, did, were did, were you involved in any way in uh, DC fandom this weekend? Um. So I wasn't like in the fandom, but I was participating in that. I sat through the eight. Hour, I say sat through. That makes it sound like it was like a doctor's appointment or something. Like sat through. Like no, it was awesome. Like you don't see, like. Uh, and I wrote up um, a recap of it that's on the DC Universe news page right now, and I... Uh, uh, I just read it earlier today, in fact. Oh, yes. And I um, and I got ready the Red Hood announcement for, like, when that was going to drop, you know, because there's, sometimes there's embargoed information that's sent over, but it's like, you know, don't release this until X time at X thing, you know, and um, 
but I wasn't doing any like thing within fandom itself, but I was doing things in reaction to it. So yeah, we're going to get, uh, I'm excited about the Titans actually going to Gotham because I like seeing bat people together. And oh, yeah. even, the, I mean, it's not like they're going to like bump into Alfred and Tim Drake on every corner, but it's still cool. They're in the world of Gotham and Barbara's going to be there. And I, I kind of like Barbara being police commissioner because it puts her in like a nice, you know, strong role. Like she was that in the Lego Batman movie and in Batman Beyond. And yep. I think there's been a few other adaptations that have done the police commissioner out. So, um, and do you think they'll do you think they'll try to bring Tim in or are we getting too many characters? Um maybe you, not this soon. It would be Does he know and can't tell us? I I, I don't know. It's okay. like it's <laughs> I honestly don't know. There's um <laughs> like the Red Hood thing was like a not a total surprise to me when I got the email, but like it's um I don't know what's gonna be in the episodes. Um it would be cool to see Tim, but I don't think for this show, you know what I like, because there's the other characters that they have to focus on in those other stories. And if you're going to do the Jason Todd Red Hood story justice, it's hard to give that the oxygen to, that it needs while you're adding Tim Drake, because Tim Drake would also need like a certain amount of attention and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Storytelling wise. Well, and I assume they're going to do stuff with Blackfire. I mean, I was hoping. Yeah, they said in the panel, like, she has a room in Wayne Manor. And I was like, wait, are they going to be living in Wayne Manor? That's like, uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's something else right there. Ooh. I guess we'll find out. So do you do interviews for the, 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 the DC Universe thing? Or is that like a different team? Um, I do do interviews. Um, like, lo- lots of different people do. Now, sometimes it'll be a case where... You know, I'll get an interview on my own. Like, for example, at Dragon Con, I uh, did a bunch of interviews and, like, we rolled those out over, like, the last year. Like, I'm like, hey, I had this Roy Thomas thing, you know. Uh, this will be good to post now because of Stargirl and the JSA. Mm. So, like, that. And then um, I interviewed, uh, like, I'll interview the cast of the TV shows, like, at the conventions. And sometimes they'll roll those out at once in one article or something or the other. And sometimes... Um, publicists will like if they're gearing up for like something big they'll have you um you know do uh they call them a phone or like a but i hope i'm not like uh josh explaining to you guys right now. oh no 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 we love this stuff is. but yeah they'll have you do a phone or where you'll like interview you know a cast member on the phone in relation to an episode that's coming up like um during season one there was a heavy hawk and dove episode of titans and uh i did a phone with alan richson like in preparation of that mm. episode which was fun because that was the week that like Aquaman was premiering and I was like hey don't forget you were the first live action Aquaman um, and he's like yes that's right <laughs> <laughs> so yeah who all have you interviewed are they cool oh I mean to say who all I've interviewed it's uh, that would take that would take a long time because I've been doing the convention circuit um, you know Phil might know a little bit thing about that because he hears some of those stories on Crawl Space yeah. uh, <laughs> he has heard stories that I would probably get in trouble for like <laughs> now in my professional because in those crawl space episodes i was like well i snuck backstage and i like you know gave clark Gregg the like you know camera and uh i was um i was a big go-getter in my 20s and uh and how about I, just as far as you've been working with dc universe who right are some I mean, of the uh, hi- who are some of the highlights of what you've interviewed Oh my gosh, the highlights. There, there's so many highlights. Um, I mean, I've done the cast of Titans. I've done, oh. the, you know, the Young Justice showrunners. Um, I got to party with the Young Justice cast after the season four announcement was made in California last year. That was cool. Nice. Um, yeah, that, that, that was fun. Um, yeah. I'll, uh, did you party with Jesse? Did you party with Jesse McCartney? Was he there? He was. If he was there, I didn't see him. I don't think. He, I don't think he was there. Um, Zira Fazal, if I'm saying her name correctly, she plays Halo. She is she she's awesome, uh, great great person. Um, and the Tim Drake uh, voice actor, whose name is escaping me, Donovan and I hung out with him at like an ice cream uh, parlor for like half an hour outside during a Young Justice get together. Uh, that was pretty cool. Are any of them so with Young Justice since it's animated? Are those people all adults, or are some of them actually kids? I believe everyone is an adult at least everyone that i've seen um 
I know that uh, Zira, like, she does the voice of, like, some of the kids on the show. Like, she does uh, Leanne Harper. Auntie Mouse, Auntie Mouse! <laughs> and, uh, and I think, like, uh, one or two of the other people. And I think Tara Strong did Tara Markov. Yeah, she's in it. Well, yeah, because that was the one thing I remember looking. Well, still in the Teen Titans Go, like, the guy who does Robin, Scott Menville, is, like, Scott in his forties. Is in his 40s. I was like, are you for real? <laughs> well, and like, and he's been in stuff like since I was like watching Saturday morning cartoon shows because occasionally I'll see something from like when I was a kid and like, and he'll be on it. Like, and, and he does, he has the same voice that he has as Robin now. Um, like, I think he was the bully on like a pup named Scooby Doo. And uh, oh man, that was a classic. And he was on full, uh, and he was on full house as like, uh, either one of Kimmy or DJ's boyfriends. And wow. Like, and I was watching, like, Fuller House, like, the reunion show, like, in the background, and, like, in the last episode, there's, like, a big wedding. And, like, in the audience, like, they had Scott Menville there because they brought, like, back a lot of people from the old show, and I was like, oh, I recognize him because I spoke to him at Comic-Con. I know what he looks like. That's Scott Menville. That is, the, cool. that is like, the best job, probably, because it's, like, as long as your voice stays strong, I mean, you could do that job till the day you die. Oh yeah, I mean, and I love his version of um, uh, of Robin. I, oh yeah, I love Teen Titans Go. I'm at like a good place in my life for it. When I, if it would have came out like, oh yeah, when I was a teenager, I'd be like, well, they're just ruining it. Like, no, mm. like, because I was not about that original Teen Titans cartoon when it first came out. Yeah, me I either. Was, I was a teenager. I had these high expectations because we were coming off of like Justice League Unlimited and Batman the Animated Series. Mm-hmm. And I loved Wolfman Press so much. I'm like, oh my gosh, if they can do that in the style of the animated universe. And then it was uh, something else, which doesn't mean it was bad. It yeah, just means that it wasn't what my 17 year old mind or however old I was was like expecting. And now I revisit. I'm like, oh, this is good. But honestly, as like, you know, we have all this stuff now, like well we had arrow arrows over but like you know arrow or like titans like these like grimdark dc tv shows so like honestly it's just fun to watch like teen titans go and see like some stuff although i have said that like there's an episode where uh they teen titans go like robin dresses up as a cat to like get starfire's attention oh yeah and he like lives as a cat yeah yeah (laughs) i have seen that that was weird this is like the most humiliating moment in Dick Grayson's history. Like, <laughs> this, this is, I mean, and that's not a dig at Teen Titans Go. That's just like an observation on like the life of Dick Grayson. Like, this is this is the low point. This is the <laughs> or like or or like in the like current light, it's like they you know, there are so many episodes where they say he has little hands. I'm like, man, they're trumping him. It's like, oh, you got such little hands. <laughs> But they like they were doing that joke on. Oh, I know. Before like the 2016 election. Oh yeah. Maybe that's where the person who started it got it. I know. <laughs> this has all been an extended like. Can you imagine if Trump? He because we're recording this on the night of the RNC. He like comes up to accept the nomination and he talks and he sounds like Scott Menville like. <laughs> no, um, that would be the low point of Dick Grayson's life. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am not afraid to say it. That would be lo- way lower than living as a cat. <laughs> All right. Uh, Donovan actually had like this ex- before I got on. Like I was talking to Donovan. He's like, "Yeah, like don't accidentally call into the RNC instead." And I said, "Yeah, wouldn't it be funny if like I'm, I'm thinking I'm on this Nightwing show and I'm actually calling into the RNC somehow and I'm giving this like speech about the life of Dick Grayson and everyone thinks I'm talking about Trump. I'm like, you know." <laughs> And like, and because of like this legal loophole, now Dick Grayson is like the Republican nominee for president. No, no, he would never, never. He'll save the party. There you go. No, 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 no. Uh, first, first he's we. Not old, he's not old enough. First, we need Dick Grayson back. I mean, I mean, yeah, we got Rick Grayson, but Dick Rick. Grayson's coming soon. Yeah. I, I love Josh. He's like, I, I know stuff. I can't say stuff. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I honestly don't. Like, I mean. And, and did you like, hear, and did you hear anything, I guess? Are we getting Tim back as Robin and they're, they're doing something else with Damien? I thought I heard um, something maybe after Joker no, War. I don't know a lot. Like, read the Teen Titans annual that comes out tomorrow that will answer part of one question. But, mm. I, I mean, as of, like, I really don't know a lot of what's going on down the Like, 
I tell people this like a few times that like people think that DC is like Dunder Mifflin, where like you know if you watch The Office, it's just this, all this like one big bullpen where like yeah, you know like you know you turn around and like there's Jim Lee telling everyone what's going to be in the book or something, but it's like there is so many different departments with so many different movie parts, and I'm I'm an independent contractor, so I'm like so low on the like information yeah. chain that like uh, sometimes people find out like information like when they like announce like a new show is coming or a new book is coming a lot of times i find out when everyone else does i'm like oh this is cool like <laughs> huh I'm like, so I'm like, apparently oh. i'm like i hope i can get paid to write about this one because this one looks interesting or like something like that so apparently you read other you like phil read other comics uh so is nightwing dick raisin is he your first favorite or like <laughs> I don't Do you know not I, play favorites? What's your deal? Yeah, I don't know if I play... I play favorites in the sense that, like, I have, like, an island of favorites. And Dick Grayson is on that island um, with a lot of the Batman family members and some of my Marvel guys. So, um... But, I mean, I follow as much stuff as I can. I'm reading more old comics now than, like, I ever did. Because mm. a lot of the times when I'm doing these articles, I'll either reread these, like, older books, like, for... to brush up on them for research, or I'll reread some... Or I'll read an old book that's new to me because I want to brush up on this character. Like, uh, when Swamp Thing was coming out and I was going to write, like, the Easter eggs for it, I read, like, Swamp Thing's entire history in a month. And th this is a true story. So, like, by the time that I finished, like, his, like, last series, and I just spent, like, a month, like, living in Swamp Thing's world, everything from the 70s, I'm like, wow, what a journey. I log on to Twitter and I see Swamp Thing canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh, Chris, okay, Kristen, you have no idea because this is Marvel, but I have to tell Josh. A uh, couple weeks ago, I was on my friend's podcast. We were talking to Howard Mackey and Terry Cavanaugh. Uh, so I was like, at the end, I was like, I was like, Terry, I'm like, I cannot let you go. This has been bugging me for decades. I'm like, tell me, who is facade? He says, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll never be, it'll, you'll never get the answer because he's like, I don't remember. <laughs> And, and there's, like, a Dan Slott uh, book. Like, this was, um... Oh, yeah, where he like, mentions the mystery, and it's yeah, like, oh, yeah, no one cares. Like, it's, it's like a two-parter where, like, Spider-Man, he has to, like, stop a bomb from going off or something. Like, he has to, like, relive. And, like, you see, like, a montage of Spider-Man doing different stuff throughout the day. But, like, the clock is ticking, and he's mm -hmm. fighting Facade. He's like, before I kill you, Spider-Man, I'm telling you for at last, my real name is. And Spider-Man, like, interrupts, and he's like, I don't care. I have no time for this right now. <laughs> but, yeah, Kristen, it was, like, a big murder mystery. It was somebody in a suit of armor, and he had, like, a bunch of suspects. Yeah. So I, I got to ask the writer finally, and he was like, I don't I, It was, like, in the 90s. He's like, I don't remember who it was. And it was, like... One of the last, if not the last stories before the Clone Saga. Oh, yeah, and what about Spider-Man? I think it was the last story before the Clone Saga, yeah. Because I think if you're reading, like, Who is Facade, there's, like, subplot pages of, like, Ben Riley in the shadows, like, you know, like, coming to New York or something like that. So, and I never I, I never got why was Ben Riley wearing Peter Parker's high school ring. I'm like, did he steal the ring when he left town that first time? There was an explanation for that. I don't remember where I read it. It might have been a Marvel source book or a trade, but like somebody somewhere explained how he got that. Huh. Maybe they I don't were remember what I don't remember what the explanation was, but I remember that like there was one given and it made sense. Boy, he'd be an egomaniac if he was dating his own clone, Kristen. Oh. Mm -hmm. That would be weird. Yeah. That would be weird. Yeah. All right, enough Marvel on this DC podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I know I have enough shows I can talk Marvel one. Okay, I mean a lot of these DC guys are Marvel guys too. Like, oh yeah, you know, like like Night Nightwing's co-creator, like Marv Wolfman and George Perez, like they both have like great oh yeah. Stuff, like, so. Okay, I don't know if you got a chance to to reread Josh, but did you get a chance to reread this one? I did right before. Oh, I he did his homework. <laughs> yep. I did, and I remember reading that when it came out. But like, so I did I. Have, like I, I, re I remember the ending more so than I remember the beginning because, like, this was part of that mini series where, um, 
we're relaunching Outsiders, and it's going to be Batman. We're going to have some of the same members and some new ones. So let's uh, do a mini series, you know, to like kind of pad it out. Where oop, there's the twenty percent thing, I might have to get a charger sooner or later. <laughs> um, but, I mean, yeah, it was that weird air of Outsiders yeah. where it's like you know Dick started this new team of Outsiders, which was cool. But then it's like after Infinite Crisis. Was it you know? Wasn't the original plan they were going to kill Dick off, and it was supposed to be Jason in that Nightwing suit? So it's like, all of a sudden they're just like, "Yeah, hey, it's still Dick. It's still Dick." Even and though then like they turn Jason into a giant slug. Yes. Wait. So yes, you know about this too. I mean, I guess. Sorry, oh, yeah. I'm evidently doubting you. But like, how do you guys all know this? Like, <laughs> what did some? So, like, because I was a bit. So I. Um, Internet, I can't remember if they... I watched the, um, you know, like, I was interested in... a giant slug, you don't forget it. You don't forget... No, 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 sorry, no, no, that I know. Oh, about about how they were talking about killing off Dick. The extended thing is, I left comics for a long time. Like, I liked Batman, the animated series, and then I had to, like, move on with my life. What kind of nerd are you? Apparently, I'm sorry, there was medieval history to study, Phil. I was very busy. Uh, and then it wasn't until partway through my grad program when my the medieval history was rotting my brain and I was needed something to dis- needed something to distract me that uh, that I got back in uh, to comics and so it's really only been about ten years so a lot of this stuff I because my dad thankfully was collecting them so I could just grab it and read it so yes I don't know but Phil's been telling me so yeah how do you know did some like memo go out or whatever that when we have that Jason as a slug and Dick having sex with that woman who I totally thought was Barbara because she had red hair. Oh, the fashion and designer like or whatever. Cheyenne, I was like, oh. Yeah. Hmm. Like, how did you, how do you guys know that that was supposed to be Jason? Like, where did you hear that? That was a thing. I can't remember so, where I heard it. It was maybe the internet. I mean, was Wizard Magazine still out at that yeah, time? I think I, it's like fandom osmosis where like everyone just kind of like knows. I, I think like rumors had leaked and creators like, I don't know if anyone has ever come out and like actually said this was the plan, but I think enough people to like kind of understand it. So and then, I mean, but, maybe, maybe we've all been wrong this whole time. And Well, and immediately after Infinite Crisis, I mean, Dick was very acting very Jason-esque and certain. I mean, like in Outsiders, I mean, he's like threatening Superman with like kryptonite and stuff. It's like, okay, that doesn't sound like Dick Grayson. <laughs> But wasn't it still Judd Winnick at that point? I'm trying to remember. I think, but it's I, I, like I think he had written it for Jason, but then when Dick didn't die, it was just like, oh yeah, we'll just call him Dick instead of Jason. Yeah, he, Judd Winnick did write a lot of Jason, um, and I liked I liked the beginning of that Outsiders run, like you know, leading up to Infinite Crisis. There was some oh, yeah. like you know, it was an interesting book, and it was a good companion to Teen Titans because like both the books were kind of different tones. Uh, yeah, but you can you know like read both of them and. Uh, I was listening to your last episode and you were talking about that moment where like, you know, uh, Lex teases Joker, like Batman's never going to love you the way he loves Catwoman. Oh. Like, th- you would get those moments in comic books now, but like back then, like that's a joke that like you would not see. Oh in yeah. Normal DC comic books. So like, you know, Outsiders was like the gritty adult book. Cause it was written by like a guy who was known for the being on the real world. Uh, like, oh, that's fine. Right. Okay, so I guess this is just the uh, historian teacher me, because every time Phil tells me that, I'm like, Phil, I need a footnote for this story that Jason was supposed to be. Like, where are your sources, Phil? I need to back this up. This is my medieval history, okay? I know this stuff. And in fairness, Jason was only a slug for, like, two pages, but that's still two pages too many. <laughs> oh, no, definitely. But wait, so my question is, if it, if Dick was supposed to be dead... And Jason was supposed to be Nightwing. Then who was supposed to be the tentacle monster? Unless they just threw that in once they're like, oh, wait, we got we got two Nightwings all of a sudden. Nah, make Jason a giant tentacle no, monster. No, three Nightwings because of Cheyenne. That was oh, awesome. I can fight crime with my background in fashion design. Well, she had powers. Like, oh, and, yeah. And I remember, like, she could, like, blast things from her arms. And, like, when they finally gave her origin, like... I remember she said, my parents were metahumans, and I remember someone on, like, the DC boards, like, said, is that the best that they can do for an origin? My parents were metahumans? Like, and I was like, Jason's a giant slug. Like, like, calm yourself down. Like, I don't care about Cheyenne's background. I want to know what's going on. And that was, like, over, on, over in Robin at the same time, Cassandra Kane was, like, maniacally evil. It was a... Oh, yeah. 
it was an interesting time. Uh, and then, Crazy. Uh, but, yeah. but yeah, this was like towards the end of uh, Dick's run with with the Outsiders. <laughs> And then you get but that's, ca- why, but that's but that's funny that you said you remembered it for the end because when you were having computer problems, I reminded Phil. I was like, uh, so since it's Dick's 80th year, I was gonna have us read 80 comment. I was like, Phil, we should read our 80 favorites. And then I came up with a list that was more than 80, and I was like, uh, Phil, how about I come up with 80 and you come up with 80? And so we'll read more than that. So this, I'm pretty sure this was one that I put on, and I was like, Phil. I put this on for this page at the end. <laughs> Him and Batman. This, yeah. is my, this is my catnip, my kryptonite, whatever. Bruce and Dick being all. But no, but no. I want to ask Josh. Uh, I want to ask Josh. Captain Boomerang Junior. Was that like the weirdest like character? Because he's the son of the original Captain Boomerang, and then uh, like in Flash, he like time Captain Boomerang time travels, like sleeps with a speedster, and all of a sudden he has a son with like super speed. Yeah, I don't know what his origin like because I remember he was in identity crisis where like he sees that he has super speed so like there's the whole okay who's his mother and i wasn't reading flash so i didn't know yeah i I, I did read flash and it almost seemed like they kind of like they're like oh she you know his mother's a speedster so they kind of had it they kind of just like shoved it in a page or two like i remember him being an outsiders and like him being kind of like weirded out that like dick was hanging out with like the son of his father's killer which like yes i kind of thought tim was being too hard on him because it's like okay but this is he didn't kill your father his father did but in fairness if somebody you know heaven forbid killed my father i probably wouldn't want to be around their son either but like you know i i almost feel bad for captain boomerang jr because like everyone's like giving him stuff about his father but i love that point in the issue where he's like i'm nothing like my father and dick's like you're wearing his costume and using his motif, like, you know? Exactly. I was also telling Phil I like that spot. It reminds me of the me- the memes that have started where... Oh, yeah, we might says, have a new meme. really how you wanted to end, Boomer? I was like, <laughs> okay, Boomer. <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone always called him Boomer, which is, like, really funny. It, it almost, like, has aged the comic in a way. <laughs> I well, know. you know, male male kangaroos are also called boomers, so there you go. I know, but, like, if you go around calling someone a boomer now, like... In, right, yes. No, it's year, true. In the year 2020, as people... Because people will listen to this in the future the way that you're listening to the Crawl Space episodes now. I'm gonna, like... I'm gonna see this, like, video. I'm gonna be like, oh, wow, I had hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... <laughs> what's, a wow. Rick, what's a Rick Grayson? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, we'll talk about Rick Grayson the way that we talk about, like, Slug Jason Todd. Except Slug Jason Todd was, like, a few pages, and Rick Grayson has been on endless action. It's been years! It's like two it's years. Been years! Yeah. He was already Rick Grayson when we were at Bowling Green, because I remember talking with some people, and they were like, oh, Rick Grayson, am I right? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I remember writing about that first arc because we used to have this thing called Bat Fan Fridays on DC Universe, and then we would like do a rundown of what was going on in each week of the Bat books. And I remember writing about Rick Grayson like then in like 2018, but it was like the end of oh my god, so it has been two years because we're almost yeah. at the end of 2020. Poor Dick. <laughs> I know, I know. But uh... happy 80th, happy 80th birthday, Dick. Good news, your memories are back. But uh, now you're the Joker's son now, not that. Well, I guess he's I guess he's getting his full memory back sometime in Joker War, so So I thought his full memory was back, but he was like remembering two lives. Yeah, he has two Yeah, he was he was remembering two lives and then the Joker yeah. had to get in there too and No, yeah, so now since Joker messed with the crystal, I think he only has one set of memories that are the Joker memories. Yeah. I don't know. Let's just suffice it to say he's messed up and it will have to be fixed through comic book science. It'll be fine. <laughs> And and the, and the very polarizing uh, new character uh, punchline. It seems like people either love her or hate her. There seems like there's no middle ground. Uh, I mean, I, I'm very neutral. It's like this is a character. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't say I have zero thoughts about her. Yeah, I like. I mean, I as you know, uh, I'm a one trick pony. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I things with Dick Grayson in them. I kind of like it. her, but then it's like you know, she was like beaten. You know, she was like beating Barbara in a fight and all this and it seemed like she got the upper hand on, you know, Nightwing. And I was just like, wait a minute. She just showed up like she was a college student. She showed up five minutes ago. It's like, how was she like beating all these like seasoned bat characters? 
that's like everyone in comic books like True. In like in like teen titans like in the bronze age like you could be like a college student and like find like a costume and like Robin would like let you in there. Like like that whole Tara betraying them thing, like they had that coming to them because Dick Grayson had no screening process like at all. Like like It's I'm, because he's a nice welcoming guy. Gee, he he's a nice crazy. boy. And and they paid for that with Tara, because like Bumblebee like joins the group. She like wears a costume and attacks them. She's like, that was to teach you to appreciate my boyfriend. And Dick's like, ooh. Ooh, I know you just tried to like kill us to teach us a lesson, but you want to join the group. And then like Duella Dan dresses up as like all these villains and pop <laughs> stuff. And then she's like, I did that because I want to join the Teen Titans. He's like, Well, emulating criminals and committing crimes, I have only one thing to say to you. Our memes are on Thursday, and here's all of our secret identities. Yeah. It was simpler times. It was simpler times. <laughs> and they paid for it with Tara. <laughs> <laughs> We, like, but it's such a good arc. I don't know. Yes, I mean it is. Like... Process for this. Team. I suppose. Um, I know I got you all off topic though. We're talking about Nightwing and Boomer going the space fighting. Actually, people. you were supposed to tell me who you've interviewed on the phone that was super cool, and you skirted around it. No, he yeah. told you some. I thought. I, I talked about Alan Richton. I said. I said. Oh. That I said our Aquaman story. He was the coolest one. The coolest i don't know if i can pick the coolest one robin lord taylor is up there like nice. he is he is a sweetheart there's been so many great people because again i've been doing this for like over 10 years at these conventions and stuff but uh you know and that's why i love like um, having donovan who's in some of those pictures back there with me because like you have someone to turn to after those interviews and be like oh my gosh that was such a great moment huh because like You'll sit down, you'll be all cool and composed, like, so, tell us what it was like when, oh, okay, okay. Okay, then when they got like, oh, that was awesome. <laughs> uh, well, I guess, did he say, because what I would always want to know is, like, when they're filming Titans, is it fun? Did Alan say? Did you ask him if it was fun? They, I think that they had a lot of fun. Like, um, when I did the press junket for season one, um, they, they, were, they were very high energy, um, um, I think her Tegan, I think, is the girl that does Raven. She was uh, she was very friendly, and um, I said to Anna Duop, uh, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, I was like, New Teen Titans was like some of my foundation of my fandom growing up, and like I loved it. And now I'm sitting here talking to Starfire, and she like gave me this look, like, oh my gosh, I'm so emotionally touched. But maybe in her head, she was like thinking, how fast can security get over here? Like, <laughs> 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 well, of, course, of course it's going to be fun. What are they going to say? No, it's boring fighting Trigon and Deathstroke. Yeah. Well, cause I, as I'm recapping this story, I'm like, I, I probably sound very like pretentious saying, and the celebrity was very touched by the thing that I told them. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, m m maybe I need a little more self awareness about this. <laughs> um, yeah, I love the Gotham cast because I interviewed them like so many times throughout like their seasons and I got to like know them really well and uh I miss them, especially Robin Moore Taylor. He's he's up there with like some and some of my favorite interviews, I would say. Well, maybe he'll do something else for DC and then you can interview him again. I'm sure it's awesome because like I said, I know I know the feeling I get just talking to like these comic creators of like books I've read over the years and I'm just you know I can just imagine those live action guys, it's just, you know, on the TV shows and stuff. It must be incredible. The creators are so great. Too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Marv Wolfman's a sweetheart. I've interviewed him a few times. Um, Chuck Dixon, I've taken him out to uh, lunch a few times because he uh, uh, he lives over here in Tampa. So, like, I interview, like, every few years, like, you know, like. Wait, uh, you take him out to lunch? <laughs> How do you well, think he gets an interview? <laughs> It's, it's oh, an interview. Uh, I offered to buy him lunch. Um, we were going to do another one for Dick Grayson's 80th birthday, but then the pandemic happened, so... <laughs> um, yeah, but you live in Florida, so you still could. <laughs> we could, but I don't want to give Chuck Dixon COVID. <laughs> That's not a headline he wants. COVID? <laughs> I don't want to give anyone COVID, really, but, like, because, uh, um, like, when when Bang Conquest number one came out, like uh, for an interview, because I want these people to say yes to these interviews. I'm like, well, let me make it worth his while. I'm like, yeah, I'll buy you lunch. You know, we'll go to you know this place, and uh, um, and I, I brought the comic with me, and we went page by page, and it was like, oh, this Graham Nolan art pretty cool. And then after the interview, we like turn off the record. It's like, all right, you got to tell me everything about what was going on in the Batman offices in the '90s. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Most of the people I talk hey, to. 
most of the people I talk to are, are online. Like before the pandemic, I was I was gonna try to get uh I live right like right outside Pittsburgh, so I was gonna like try to get like Ron friends. I could have taken Ron friends out to lunch or something, but you know. Then this hit. <laughs> Ron Friends is cool. Oh yeah, he, um, yeah. He's um, he's done stuff with the Clone Saga. Yeah, people, and they, uh, he's always been very, very supportive of uh, of my friends over there. So I've uh, always appreciated that. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. I guess I need to up my lunch game. Except that I don't think any. Except I don't think anybody particularly famous lives in. Yeah, Ohio. you're in Ohio. So is anyone else in Ohio? <laughs> go to Mike. I mean, go go to conventions, and you don't have to take. I mean. I say take people to lunch. Like that's like one oh, yeah. person that like lives in like Florida, and and if he was watching this, he'd be like, I don't remember. Oh yeah, I guess some guy that interviewed took me to lunch like two or three times a few years ago. Yeah, that's like, what I was gonna do. I was gonna I was gonna go down there. Uh, Ron Friends was supposed to be at a convention here uh, in like May or something. I mean, we're both living town, ta- you know, close to town, but he was supposed to do a convention here, and I get you know, of course, it got canceled. So yeah, I remember going to um c2e2 and somebody posted i hope you're all having fun at the last convention of the year no. and it's like ha 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 humor and now <laughs> here we are and uh and i remember when they were canceling wondercon i was thinking like wow because this was like march and wondercon was going to be like mid to late april i was like yeah that's kind of risky because maybe COVID will be over by then but it's like too far away to tell for sure I was like, oh, yeah, I thought COVID might be over by, like, April. No, WonderCon, that's the one in Anaheim, right? Yes. Yeah. The governor was on that. Mm. They've been, um, on that that thought, though, I'm going to grab my charger because I just got the 10% thing. So talk about Nightwing saying, okay, boomer the chemo. I will be right back. All right. I mean, we can wrap it up if you, like, need to. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say we could wrap it up in a little bit, but, uh. Yeah, I, just, I mean, I, don't know. I guess blah blah blah. My main thing is, I made us read a whole comic just for this two-page spread, so that we could have a Bruce Dick moment. I mean, we 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 wrote <clears throat> last week. I mean, we did the beginning of the, his time with the Outsiders. This is kind of the end, so kind of makes true. sense. Like, I can't do this. Go back to being a hero. If you refuse it, you're everything I always hoped you would be. Oh well, yeah, I mean, I think it's just. I think those last two pages are just another example of, you know, Batman, you're too, you know, you're too good for this, you know. Exactly. I love it so much. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I always say. Nightwing is Batman. Just he's not as big, big a jerk about it. I like how he left on his own terms. Yes. Um, I didn't like Bruce being like, it was my plan for, he's like, so the mission failed and Bruce is like, but I planned for it to fail. And Boomer's totally leaving us for Suicide Squad. All but I wanted that to happen. <laughs> and screw this team, I'm leaving as well. I, That's also what I wanted. <laughs> I mean, it was basically them moving toward like towards like the cl- the more classic team, you know, Batman, Katana, and all you know, yeah. the rest of them. And I, and I was kind of annoyed by that because I was digging the um, the dynamic with like Dick and Arsenal and like Jade mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Thunder and. By the way, I listened to your last episode. You were all talking about like, oh yeah, did we know that Black Lightning had kids before this? And I'm going to say, no, we did not. <laughs> and it did not make sense. Really? We like, didn't. Huh. That he had like, and and then, they, and then a few years later, they bring in like another daughter. And don't get me wrong. I love Thunder and Lightning. They are great additions to the Black Lightning, like mm. legend and mythos. But like their inclusion, because there is... Like, in those old Batman and the Outsider issues, like, Jefferson's kind of, like, chasing his ex-wife around. He moves to California to try and get back with her, and they're, like, going on trips and stuff together. Then, like, there's another book where he's in, like, Brick City, and she, like, goes to be with him when he gets injured, and they're, like, moving in together, and then she moves out. And there's, like, never any, like, children growing up, like, oh, no. huh. in the household. Interesting. I mean... Well. They add something to the story, so I'm not going to say how dare they do that. But like when you guys were saying last week, oh yeah, did Jefferson have kids? I was going to be, no, he did not, and it did not make sense. <laughs> was that like a Judd Whittick thing? So was that him writing Green Arrow when I think they brought in uh, Black Light? Was it his niece or something? I think it was Black Lightning had a niece, and I think Oliver slept with her, and then she died. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know anything about that, but that sounds like something that would happen in a Jeff comic. Yeah, yeah, I think it was, yeah. 
Yeah, and Jefferson was like a member of like Lex Luthor's like presidential administration. Yeah, it's like so. secretary. Yeah, did, he say, did he say something about secretary of education or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like secretary of education. Like he's a member of the executive branch. Like imagine like My God, he's Betsy DeVos equivalent. I, I know. Like imagine finding out that Betsy DeVos is like on like a superhero team with like superpowers, and it's like, can you do that instead of like? the secretary of education thing because like yeah can you do that instead of ruining public education that'd be great yeah. <laughs> um but but yeah so i mean i was not about this i i do agree with you that's a good scene with dick and bruce i'm annoyed at bruce like kind of like you know pretending that he's on top of everything like let, let dick have his moment here but uh yeah. i was annoyed at the time about dick leaving the outsiders and just like the way that they were doing this where like uh I think that it was marketed, and this might be my memory playing tricks on me, that, like, each issue was, like, two people, and at the end of each issue, you were going to find out who was on the team and who wasn't. Like, it was, like, Survivor, and then, like, at the end, you have the new Outsiders. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But you kind of kind of saw this, where it was going. And this might be, because, of course, um, when did this come out? October 07. So by the time I read this stuff, it had already... And I think they, by the time Dick was out of the Outsiders, he'd already started. They'd already started on like the next version of the Titans team or whatever. I think so. Yeah. I didn't have to feel the loss of like, oh, he's not on the team or whatever. And I was kind of glad he left because, as I said, I didn't I actually I did think the beginning of the Outsiders was was pretty good. But I've liked Dick better on the Teen Titans. I am more of a Teen Titans titans person because i think titans is teen titans and is a like brighter happier i don't know it's a sunnier version of or the outsiders is the gritty version of titans i don't know Which, um and so and i prefer i like it when they're you know like oh we're a family i mean obviously emotional yeah friend stuff so i prefer it i like dick better on titans i liked him on the outsiders though as like kind of like a try something new like this isn't going to be the permanent thing but like for this era let's like try this flavor you know um because that previous team of titans that he was on that book had kind of gotten stale and and that new titans book that he was on after this outside is when i wasn't big into that one and he wasn't on it for very long now it's like 10 issues and then it's like oh i have to go be batman now (laughs) yeah yeah that one didn't last he went to go be batman um and like it's hard to do this like reunion book of like the original titans as adults together again i don't think a lot of people have pulled it off very well and it's it's hard to do but when it's done right like i like that's why i liked the mike mccone jeff johns one which you know dick was not on as a permit but he like you know showed up from time to time yeah. where it was like a mix of the new generation and the old generation you know um i thought that was a good way to do it and um and that's kind of what they're doing with the TV show right now, where you have, like, the new kids, like, uh, Joey and Rose. Yeah. You have, like, uh, Donna and Raven. You know, she's, I guess, one of the new kids in there. And, and then you have, like, uh, Dick and Donna and stuff like that. And I, I hear rumors about Roy. I don't know if that's true. Like, I really don't. Well, we saw his phone number. I know, yeah. <laughs> well, 555. Yeah. Five. Maybe now that era, era's over and there's no chance of, you know, them using Roy over there. It's so weird now because I remember a time where, like, yeah, you, you couldn't do something like that because this character's somewhere else. But yeah. I did the math. At one point last year, we had, like, five or six, maybe five or four versions of Dick Grayson at once. Because we had Brendan Thwaites. Mm-hmm. And, then we had, Wait, so, um, oh. and then we had Over on Young Justice um, was going on around the same time. And um, then you have Teen Titans Go!, and there was something else. Maybe it's those animated movies that they were doing that I was counting. Oh, maybe, yeah. But there was, like, multiple versions of Dick, like, in multiple versions of continuity at the same time. And I was like, wow. I remember when, like, Justice League Unlimited couldn't use him because, like, not even because he was in a movie, but because, like, Chris Nolan was doing the Batman movies. Therefore, like, no Batman characters could be in Justice League Unlimited. Like, that's how, like, restrictive it was. And now it's like... Wait, Batman's yeah. not even in it. Well, Batman's in it, but Batman's no one, like no, no other Bat character, just Batman. Yeah. yeah, no other Batman. Yeah, look up the Bat embargo because that was like uh, it will frustrate you. But look it up. Well, that's, well, that's their gold line that's, there. Yeah, that's part of the reason why on the Batman, which again I watched later, 
the Robin Batgirl comes in before Robin, right? Because the Batman started and the Robin character was in Teen Titans. So Robin couldn't be in the Batman, that animated oh. series, until Teen Titans was over. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. That that's um I remember when they announced Batgirl was coming, a bunch of fans were like, Hooray, Cassandra Kane and then, <laughs> Why do you all think they're doing Cassandra Cain first in this series? Exactly. And they were like, she'd be such a good fit for this series. And she would. <laughs> all right. I wanted to, I was going to wrap this up. Uh, Josh, thank you for joining us. You're always welcome here to talk Dick Grayson. Uh, I can send you, I can send you the list if you ever want to come back. Like we have the rest of the year planned out. And please extend an invitation to Dawn and I, Donovan I and Stella. Back. If they if, you so much that we barely did her book. <laughs> you're good that's why we only picked one issue i talked about what i wanted it yeah had, she 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 literally just wanted those last two pages it had dick and bruce having a moment that's what i'm here for but Always. yeah but yeah i'll send you our list for the rest of the year if you ever want to come back or like i said uh, ex- please extend an invitation to dawn of interstella because i know they're huge dc fans Oh yeah, the, the, they would probably love to do it. If you have Stella on, you should do a Dick and Babs like shipper issue. Oh, I know. Some towards the end of the year was what's that Grayson issue twelve when he goes back to Gotham, and uh, I know Barbara's. In, I think Barbara's in that one along with. Yeah, do you have but, Birds of Prey number eight? That's a nice. We already did it. Yeah. Oh, if, she, if Stella was here, she'd say <gasps> betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba Moose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> If you pull a bubble moose on her, she's going to be like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> oh, that was that, that was her rap alias on Spider-Man Crawl Space. And it's like, it's she is so... It's funny because like behind... Now you, you have those pictures behind me and Stella's in one in the Bane mask, but there's one in front of me. And it's us like from the Spider-Man Crawl Space days at Comic-Con and like Stella's there in her bubble moose like days. <laughs> it's like 2011 and we're at like the Hard Rock Cafe, which is like now closed and like... <sighs> And, like, now Stella looks completely different. She looks like a character from, like, a post-apocalyptic movie because, like, her hair is shorter and it's, like, oh. partially dyed now. Like, like, and I'm looking at this picture of her from, like, when she was, like, you know, a teacher at her, like, school and now, like, she's seen things. And, like, you know, <laughs> she's, she's not a teacher anymore? <laughs> um, I might be overstepping, but I, she might have talked about that on her podcast, but she has made some transitions in her life, which is hmm. probably for the best with the, it was her choice, um, which is probably for the best with the pandemic and everything, you know, so. I say, because last year she was a teacher. She was, yes. I remember her because she was a Latin teacher, and I was like, yeah, Latin. <laughs> She'll talk Latin with you. She loves she loves her Latin. You know, she begins all of her podcasts with a Latin dream. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's like Sale or something like that. I'm probably butchering it. Sale? They don't know. We don't know. How'd you guys, how'd you guys meet? Spider-Man Crawl Space. Nice. Yeah. And we met arguing about Batman comics. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On, on the message board, that was how uh, brought us together. And then Batman Universe was our playhouse. And now um, we're all still good friends. We all do, you know, uh, some of us are on DC Universe. We're trying to get Stella over there as well. But she's, you know, uh, she's an independent spirit that can't be tamed. <laughs> nice all right before we let you go you want to plug anything josh um keep on checking out dc universe um you know because it it's more than just people act like it's just you know these uh original videos and stuff like that but there's like so much on there you know there's the 80 year comic library that's that was how i read reread this book that way i didn't have to like crawl through my back issue bin and figure out where it was or something like that um it's very convenient just to have like DC's catalog. Oh yeah, like that. I've and leveled obviously... up to platinum recently. <laughs> oh. Upgrade to platinum. I'm sorry. No, the little rewards thing. If you read enough comics, oh, I've made yeah. it to platinum status now. <laughs> I love, I love doing that. And then, like, I was reading something on Comicsology, and I was like, I'm not getting points for this. Like, it's like programmed in my brain. Um, but yeah, and then there's the community, you know, and the, the community has Q and A's once in a while where like celebrities will come by and then, um, you know, uh, the, the, there's all these features. And then she, she was talking about the reward system. Like people, people don't give DC universe like enough credit. They're like, Oh, the, the shows are going to HBO max. And that means it's over. And it's like, 
you know that like the shows is like one section of the site, mm-hmm. and I know it better I, not be over. Say what? I said it better not be over. <laughs> As far as I know, we are still going. And, and, uh, and like, all the all the old stuff, like, all those animated series are on there. Like, me and my son were watching uh, Batman Beyond and stuff on there. And Yeah, it's a, it's a great experience that way. And, um, yeah, definitely plug in DC Universe. And we mentioned BatmanUniverse.net earlier. Uh, certainly, there's that's an always a good resource to go to, as you know, because you use them in your book, which we appreciate. Um, and... Uh, you know, great podcast. Um, I'm very partial to the commentary speed because Donovan and I, we did a commentary a few years ago for Bat Monk, which was an Alvin and the Chipmunks original Batman like episode. Which, like, I listen to that every few years, and that is like one of the craziest things that we ever did. <laughs> Wait, is this on Batman Universe or? Yeah, Batman Universe. Go oh, to the yeah. go to the commentary speed. Um, we we should have you guys come on for a commentary on an episode sometime. Maybe like. Uh, a Dick Grayson centric episode, like I don't know if we already did old wounds, um, but something like that. Oh uh, yeah, I'm down for any Batman, you know, episode. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll make it happen. I have to invite you guys to my house since I was a guest of yours, and then you can uh, give me a taste of my own medicine by being off topic for like over an hour and not letting me talk about the action. Oh no, I think we did. We probably did more diverting off course than you did. <laughs> no, it was fun. It was, yeah. All right, so yeah, You're like, like I said, like a little mini podcast celebrity, so we're getting the special feeling inside of a celebrity coming on our show. Oh, there's a celebrity. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I hey. wish I was. I wish I was important enough to be a celebrity. Dan did Dio or Didio or however you say his name. It took a picture for you. That he's picture. never taken a. He's never taken a picture for me. Hey, like I said, like I said, we had fun. We'll have to have you back here. I I also do a. Uh, spider-man uh, show with one of my other co-hosts so i'll have to send you that list too so i have to have you over there because i know you're a fan of spider-man <laughs> oh yeah yeah spider-man is still one of my top characters and i don't i don't talk about him as often as um i should anymore like um i always said that like dc has just taken better care of me the last few years that like you know it's like people keep on saying to me oh josh you should check out this spider-man book it's actually really good now and it's like yeah it's really hard for me to get back into that spider-man mindset but uh, yeah Especially like you know, you know me and Spidey because you listen to those. Yeah. Shows. Oh yeah, Betty Brant, I know. Oh, I gotta apologize to her. <laughs> Maybe your show will be the thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much. Like I said, I'll send the schedules over if you ever want to join us. And please, I'd love to talk again. I hear Donovan and Stella. I'd love to talk to them too. So. Oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'll tell Donovan immediately. I'll we might, tell Stella too. We might have, have to get a big group chat. So, I mean, we can get everybody on here at the same time. Yeah, and especially if uh, knowing that you met them in Bowling Green, so uh, you know that was that was a very good time. I I wish that that would I wish that there wasn't COVID, so we could do that again. But mm-hmm. like, I know that they were going to do like I think a romance comics or something this year or whatever instead. But it was like let's do Batman again. That was fun. <laughs> We're di- yeah, we're- and I uh, and I'm sad that I didn't remember you. I remember Donovan from the conference, and I remember his name, and I was like, "Oh, that's why I asked if Batman Universe still existed, or if you kind of got like sucked up into DC Universe." Because I remembered his name, I was like, "Oh, he's the dude." Well, probably because it was that interview that apparently you were on, and I didn't know. You're <laughs> face you're, up. I was like, "Oh, you're, he's a bully. you're Donovan's Robin." <laughs> I think my profile picture on Twitter is us at Bowling Green. I don't know. I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> oh, well, like, yeah, but yeah, it, on Twitter, my avatar, it's me, Stella, Donovan, and Ben at Bowling Green, because that's like, oh, these are my favorite DC people and me together in one place. Yeah, you know, I like, think, uh, yeah, it looks like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, before, b- b- before the war made us all grizzled. And- <laughs> <laughs> all, all young and fresh-faced, yes. Yeah, I, love, yeah. I love Phil handle all social media. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you and everyone else. about a foot taller now since that picture's <laughs> been taken. Like, <laughs> oh, is that your intern? Yeah, 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 that's the intern. Oh, yeah, I'll have to text him saying you legitimize my job. Yes, I, I solemnly swear I will never question the realness of your job again. <laughs> no, it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> All right, like I, yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to rush you off. I just have to work in the morning, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we no problem. I have a real job. <laughs> oh, a real job. 
<laughs> hey, I also have to work in the morning. Okay, professor. I'm going to sleep in until like 11 and then start writing about uh, John Ostranger's Suicide Squad. <laughs> See, that's what the job I want. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Josh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you. Like I said, we have to have you back, so. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was awesome. Indeed. It, indeed. <laughs> what? I don't know. What else to say? All right. So, yes, we we have gone extra long, so should we get out of here? Yep. All right. Uh... We have to go to our real jobs in the morning. <laughs> yeah, some of us. All right, everyone. So, yes. Hey, are you an important person? Would you like to talk to us? Like Joshua Lapham Bertoni? Uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember to follow us on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh Hey, you could watch this video on YouTube. You can see all of our faces. Uh, go subscribe to our YouTube, uh, Capes and Lunatics YouTube channel. Uh, find links to everything on the one convenient place. That's Linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And remember to support sponsors, Tweaked Audio, Hunt a Killer, Pod Life the Book, now in digital and paperback. And while you're buying books, go pick up Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder. That's right. Uh, and... When you're on Amazon, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes because, hey, it costs money to put these up. So, hey, please help us support this show, the network, and that crazy man, Rob, Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain, so says Master Doom. <sighs> and again, you have no... <laughs> I did your plug, so... Come on to our show and defend the integrity of your job to me. I don't know if you're good luck or what, because, yeah, you literally mentioned Josh's name, and then, like, five minutes after last week, I, I jumped on Twitter, and I guess, luckily, he was on there, so I was like, hey, can we come on? And, like, five minutes later, sure, sure. Okay, do I need to mention somebody else's name? Peter Tomasi, will you come and talk about the cloisters with us? Your issue's next. It makes me so happy. Oh. I'll fangirl, I'll fangirl all for an hour. Oh. Give me another homework assignment. Please respond to Phil's message. Phil, please message him. <laughs> I will try. Yeah, yep. It's that's usually where I talk the most. Of the get most of my interviews from is Twitter. So, but yeah, I want to get Josh, Donovan, and Stella on here. Get a big group chat one day, maybe. All right, everyone, come back next time, same wing time. Same wing channel. Nightly news.